Today we're going to take you through the process of how to disconnect an air conditioner. In this case we're going to be relocating it. So we're just going to pump the refrigerant back into the unit. This is an old R22 system and you can almost always do this with R22. R410A it's a little bit more iffy. Uh, you can't always pump it all back in with, R20, with R410A. So in preparation for pumping the refrigerant back into this air conditioner we're going to remove the caps that conceal the valves. There's valves right here this is the high side valve and then right down there is the low side valve so these caps on the outer side a lot of times these caps will be facing up but in this case they're facing off to the side this is a little bit older unit obviously all right careful we're going to take this cover off we've got our electrical compartment open because we'll need to be able to press the contactor in here uh, in order to pump the refrigerant back into the system but for now we're going to take these caps off and get ready to do that Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to close this liquid side valve all the way to prevent any refrigerant from coming out of the air conditioner. And that's going to allow us to basically suck all of the Freon or refrigerant back into this unit and then shut this valve. So we'll prepare that now. We'll get the right size uh, Allen ratchets. Like I said, we're going to close this side all the way down so that the refrigerant won't be able to come out of the unit at all. Alright, that side is closed. So we're done with that one for now. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to close this one all the way to start off with. And then we'll actually open it back up a little bit once we get it all the way closed. Because it takes a, a little bit of time to get this thing all the way closed down. So you don't want to have to close it all the way while you're holding that contactor in. All right, now it's all the way closed, but now I'm actually gonna open it back up just a little bit because we want it to be able to pull that refrigerant into the unit. So we're gonna maybe go like two full turns. So three, four. So that's two full turns. So when we go to close it now, it will be just having to close it two full turns. In order to tell that the refrigerant has all been pulled back into the unit, we need to connect a set of gauges just to the low side of the system. The low side is going to use the blue hose. The low side of the system is going to be the larger pipe. So we'll go ahead and get our hose connected to this and it should show us how much pressure is currently in the system. So you can see right here we have about a little over 100 PSI in the system. But before I pump this thing down, I am just going to bleed out a little bit of air that was in this hose. So I've taken the yellow hose off the middle of the manifold. So we'll bleed a little bit of the refrigerant up through the blue hose into the manifold. That way, now when I pump it down, it won't pull any air into the system that would have been located in that blue hose. We are now ready to pump the refrigerant back into the unit but in order to do that we're going to have to restore power and put our uh, disconnect back in. The disconnect was removed from this while we were working on this. Okay, it's connected. So now we should be able to just push in the contactor. I want to use a non-metallic object for doing that. So everything is rigged up here now. Our low side hose is connected so that we can see the pressure that is in the piping that we are connected to and we have our power turned on to the unit so once I push in this contactor right here which is kinda of hard to see behind these wires but there's a little plunger there that I can push in and sometimes there's a little cover over that plunger and you just have to take out a couple of tiny screws to take that cover off in order to do what I'm about to do. In theory you could turn the air conditioner on with a the thermostat uh, instead of pushing the plunger in but pushing the plunger in works really well because I can push it in on as long as I need to and then a release when I am finished. Right up here we have our current pressure of the system so we'll be able to watch that come down and once we get close to zero we will close that valve and then after we're done closing the valve we will release the contactor. So here we go. Oli is the cameraman. Thanks man. Thumbs up uh, for Oli and his good work. So 
Here you go. I'm gonna go ahead and push this contactor in. Three, two, one. Woo. And then look at the pressure gauge right there. See it coming down, it's down to 50. Now it's down to 25. And it slows down kind of as it gets lower. And we'll let it keep going here. It's uh, down to like 10 PSI, so I'm gonna start closing this valve now. I'm gonna keep holding this contactor in. Look at the pressure gauge again. It ended right at about zero. I might pull a tiny bit more in. You can actually run it into a tiny bit of a vacuum if you want to. That's it right there. So we officially have pumped all of the refrigerant from the system back into the condenser. Now it seems kind of weird because you would think that since all that refrigerant that is in the rest of the system has been pumped into the air conditioner, you'd think that the air conditioner is going to be like overfilled with refrigerant. But that's not really the case because of the way these things work. This is called the condensing coil right here that we're looking at. So when this air conditioner is running, it's a mixture of superheated gas and liquid refrigerant. So if the fan runs longer, like you just saw the fan was running, it's going to cool off that refrigerant and you can fit actually a significant amount of refrigerant into this coil here. So this coil is acting as the storage for all of the refrigerant that was in the system. So since we are at zero PSI and even a tiny bit of a vacuum, now we are ready to go ahead and cut our line set. Now once we reconnect the system, obviously we'll be pulling a vacuum on the line set to make sure we remove any air that's in the system. But for now we can just cut it and then we'll tape the line set off because basically the reason we're doing this is because we are going to be moving the air conditioner to a different location because they're putting a little addition on this building. I will link to the different tools that you'll need for doing this, including a set of gauges. These ones right here are made by JB, which is nice. Highly recommend picking up a set of American-made gauges, if at all possible. Uh, like I said, these are JB. They're made in the USA. Yellow Jacket is another really good option, so I'll put those in the description, as well as a set of Allen wrenches so that you can get those valves cranked down. The vast majority of the time, the valves are going to look just like what we looked at today. Sometimes there are no valves, and then also other times there are valves that have like a stem sticking out that are called a king valve. So there's a few different variations, but this one is the most common by far. One other caveat is that with R410A, this isn't really possible to the same extent. You can pump some refrigerant back into the unit when, with an R410A system, but usually you can't take it down quite as far. So when I was holding that contactor in, um, you know, we ran the compressor for what 30 seconds or maybe a little bit longer and That's totally fine But what you don't want to do is like keep holding the contactor in for a really long time uh, Because it could damage the compressor because there's supposed to be refrigerant cir Circulating past the compressor and that's what allows the compressor to cool So since there's a larger pressure differential for R410A than there is for R22 sometimes that compressor can't get the pressure all the way down to zero. So oftentimes what we have to do is we'll pump some of it back into the condenser for an R410A system and then whatever's left, if it was like 50 PSI or 25 PSI, then we'll manually recover that with a recovery machine. So you might get lucky and it all pumps in fine, but just don't keep holding that contactor in for a really long time or else you could damage something. So now we're going to disconnect the rest of the items that are connected to this air conditioner. We're going to cut these, uh, these refrigerant lines and then we'll be disconnecting the electrical. Um, there's just low voltage coming in right here. This is our thermostat wire, so that's 24 volts. Before we disconnect that, you always want to turn off the power to your furnace or air handler inside the building because that 24 volts is not coming from out here, it's coming from inside. But right now it is turned off. And then we'll be disconnecting these wires right here, which are actually feeding our contactor. It looks like we have 240 volts and they use a black wire as a ground, which is a no-no, but it is what it is. That's one side.
So this right here is a code violation. They used a black wire for the ground. But here's the thermostat wires. Get those disconnected. You want to be careful to try not to get dirt in the lines, so we'll get some tape and then tape these off. It looks like I didn't record the portion where I insulated those wires, so take some wire nuts and make sure that you insulate those wires and then also shut off the power inside of the building that feeds that outdoor disconnect. So I did both of those, but I didn't record it. And then also you want to mark that ground wire. In this case, we're actually just going to tear out that electrical and then have to move it anyway so those wires are going to get corrected and there will be a proper colored green ground wire that will be used or a bare ground wire. As far as the line set itself goes uh, we're just going to use some black electrical tape and tape off the lines that are going both on the air conditioner as well as the line set itself that goes into the building and black electrical tape seems to work pretty well for that. Those are the details I needed to add so let's put this video in that timeline. If you found this to be helpful, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe underneath this video. If you guys want to learn more with us, I'll put a couple videos here on the screen. This one right up here is the one YouTube thinks you want to watch. This one right down here is the one I think is most relevant given the topic of this video. If you have any other thoughts or suggestions, put them in the comments underneath this video. A lot of times there's some really smart people down there, so make sure you take a minute and check that out. Alright, thanks again, and we'll see you right over there.